All right, I don't think you guys can see Holly down there. Maybe you can. Uh, welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm just showing off some of the maintenance uh, that I do here in uh, December in the garden in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Uh, as you can see from the drone footage, you know, this is a fairly small uh, urban lot in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it's less than two tenths of an acre. Uh, but it's been very, very heavily planted over the last uh, little over. Uh, two, two and a half years or so now, uh, a lot of pieces have gone into this uh, garden. Uh, you would think it's just a ton of maintenance because there's so many different things in this garden, but Steph and I actually spend very little time uh, on maintenance. We're out here a lot because we're filming it and we're, you know, we're <laughs> running our, I'm running my mouth in front of a camera uh, or, you know, just thinking about it from a content perspective, from an actual maintenance perspective, there's not much. Uh, this morning, uh, as an example of that, I just go out here and rake off the turf that's back here in the back garden. It's actually going to become a patio, so I'm not really maintaining it at turf, as turf or lawn uh, at this moment, but I am keeping the leaves off of it, just uh, keeping the area looking more attractive. And then taking off the leaves out of the pansies. I do have some annuals planted out here, some pansies snapdragons, uh, that kind of thing. And so the leaves have to need to come out of those, otherwise they stay too wet. Uh, so that's uh, that's taken care of and then I go through and rake the leaves off the ground covers So if there's any 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 ground covers that are out here in the landscape uh, I don't want leaves sitting on them all winter long It will make thin spots or you know, just kill spaces in them So the leaves go left and right of that you think I'd just be cleaning the leaves out of here I don't no perp no real purpose in it. I'm, I'm, I'm using the leaves are mulch just like any other mulch and they have some beneficial insects and probably some non-beneficial insects they're hiding in the garden that, um, you know, um, I, I don't feel like I have the right to choose whether they live or die every year. And so, I, uh, you know, I think that for me in personal, this is a personal thing, I think the garden a little bit messy in the wintertime is kind of the way it's supposed to look, right? It's supposed to be a, re a time of rest. Um, you know, the, that's what the plants are doing right now. They're resting, they're recharging, and they're getting ready for next year. And they don't have to put on a perfect happy face, you know, for the winter as well. And so I like the garden to be a tiny bit messy in the winter time, but I do protect the things that I have. And so that means getting the leaves off the lawn, getting the leaves off the ground covers. Uh, I go through with the rake and just kind of pick leaves out of the, uh, the tougher shrubs that, you know, that, you know, the, the, the rake won't hurt, uh, do, you know, in that, that, with that process of, you know, pulling leaves off of them. And then uh, I have some paths out here that are just created from wood chips. Uh, those paths, uh, I go through and, and break those off maybe once every two weeks. You know, that I've got an oak up above me. It's uh, dropped maybe three quarters of its leaves at this point. I'll have another uh, once or twice I'll need to rake the leaves off the paths. But that's it. All of that uh, from raking off the lawn to raking off the ground cover to raking off the shrubs. To raking off the paths, you know, none of that took more than, you know, 20, 30 minutes at the absolute most. Uh, the leaves uh, back here where the, where the oak is dropping, the majority of them, they get too thick. And so I will go through at some point after I've raked, I'm going to just keep doing my raking for a while, but there's a couple spots back there where I'm piling up pretty deep. I'll probably take a pitchfork at some point and uh, grab a few shovelfuls or pitchforkfuls and move them to some spaces that don't have any leaves. Uh, once all the leaves have completely fallen off, once all the leaves have on the ground, I will, um, at that point, Steph and I will probably mulch. And what we'll do, you'll see that in video content, we'll edge the turf, uh, get all the edging done, get the paths looking like they're supposed to look. Uh, and then from there, we'll mulch right over the top of these leaves lightly. The leaves are mulch themselves like i said i'll just put a deck a thin decorative mulch over the top of it and then it'll look like uh, just a perfect little space you'll never know uh, that the leaves are even under there uh, at that point that'll be later in the winter time i leave most of my perennials standing through the winter time it's another one of those things where there is some overwintering of beneficial and like i said probably non-beneficial insects that stay on our native perennials and so if you have you know, things like bee balm or upright phlox or rudbeckia or, you know, um, echinacea or any of our, you know, uh, Joe pie weed, any of our native perennial things. Those are probably host plants for things through the winter. 
Uh, so I leave those things standing. Some of them actually have seeds on them. A lot of those aster family plants keep their seeds well into the fall, and some of the birds will take advantage of that if they haven't already. Uh, I do collect some of the seed out here, and so I also wait. I have to wait for dry days to do that. We've had some rain recently, and I haven't been able to get uh, all the dahlia seed that I wanted to get, but I'll get it in the next few days. I just, I, I did cut my dahlias down. Uh, um, some of the perennials, the other thing about cutting them down is they have hollow stems, and some of that water can get down in those hollow stems and potentially freeze thaw. But the way those dahlias melt, the water's getting down in there anyway. So it does, just doesn't matter if you look down there, all cracked down at the bottom anyway. So water's getting in. So I go ahead and cut those back. I'm in zone seven here. Uh, in order to save all of my dahlias through the winter, I'd need to lift them out of the ground and store them. Uh, but I don't, and so, but I'll get, you know, two thirds of my dahlias will come back. The ones that have lived a couple years now will come back pretty much every year, but, but I, don't, I don't take them out of the ground. I'm right on the border of where that would be necessary. So I'll lose a few, and again, some will come back, and then I collect the seed. I cut those down and just piled it up back here. I'm gonna, actually gonna try to dry those seed heads out a bit before I put that stuff on the compost pile and collect that seed. It's really easy to collect. I mean, it's just, it's just a seed head on the top of your dahlias. If you haven't cut your dahlias back, you can go out there and look at them now. Once, if they're, once they're dry, you need to have that, that whole seed head to be kind of dry and then it breaks apart in your hand and you can store the seed. I store the seed in a glass jar as long as it goes into the glass jar dry um, and it comes up readily in the spring. So. I look at some of the fact that some of my dahlias are going to die over there as an opportunity uh, to, uh, uh, to have new dahlias that have been crossed with one another by the bees uh, during the growing season. And I think that's it. That's basically, you know, the maintenance we do. I do use a blower for about five minutes to blow off the driveway and blow off the steps back here. A few of the containers need, you know, leaves pulled out of them. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I actually like that the garden is, you know, a little bit messy because it's, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect all the time. That's, uh, and it, you know, I look out there and I go, wow, it looks like winter. Uh, it's because it's winter <laughs> or it's coming up on winter. I guess we're uh, not technically uh, in the winter yet. I've got uh, some big, beautiful amaryllis bulbs that I got from Color Blends that I'm gonna show you how to plant in just a second. But I want one other thing here is our vegetable garden, our cool season vegetable garden over here is just putting, doing a, I mean, we've had a, one of the best performances we've ever had. Uh, out of our fall garden. We just haven't had very much cold. The only nights we've had that were down in the 20s uh, were in the upper 20s and I was able to put a cover over it. And so we're just keep on getting stuff out of there. I picked a handful of peas. You know, after I rake off the rake off the lawn and rake off the beds and rake off the paths and do a little bit of pruning out here, I can go get lunch uh, in, from our own garden. But I, you know, I pick a handful of peas. There are a bunch out there too, a lot. I need to go back and pick some more, but I just kind of wanted to show you you know, in just a few seconds, those, pea, uh, those uh, uh, peas grow rapidly in the fall. I picked some carrots, and so my carrots are pretty good. This is the second year growing carrots in that garden, and the, this one is about, I'm gonna say four inches of actual edible carrot at this point. That, I grow it directly in the ground. If you grow in raised beds and you have loose soil, you know, your carrots can root deeper. Um, I'm growing in a clay-based soil over there, and we're improving it each season. So last year, I had these little nubby carrots. Uh, I'll bring this over here closer. I had all these little nubby carrots like that. That's because the soil's too compact, right? Um, this year, lots more of them were like that. And so uh, we're on our way. I'm improving that soil. I know a lot of people like to do their vegetables in raised beds, but I've always uh, preferred to improve the natural soil. I think that the uh, number one, all the nutrients that the plants need are in that rock dust that's in that uh, soil, that you know, ground up rock that soil's made out of, uh, has all the nutrients that these things need. So I think you get more nutrient dense produce. You don't have to fertilize them as much because you know, compost does run out of fertilizer if you're using all compost and, um, you know, and you're not recomposting it season to season. Uh, I, so anyway, I think you get more nutrient dense uh, produce out of it. And plus, you know, at the end of the day, I want to be able to grow vegetables, even if, if there was some sort of, you know, I'm not a, you know, I'm not thinking, I'm not, I'm not a world ender kind of person, but you know, if things got weird, you know, like they did a couple years ago, uh, I want to be able to 
continue to grow produce without relying on bringing in material to fill a box or materials to build a box. Um, so that's the, one of the main reasons I'm thinking about why I'm improving my soil, because I want my soil to um, you know, be able to grow these things. Got some beautiful broccoli over there. I picked one uh, this morning. So again, I've got a salad here. I, I gotta go back out there and pick a, a little lettuce. Got kohlrabi. Uh, kohlrabi's great. Just I, I generally will um, put it in the broiler for a few minutes, but um, you can eat it raw. You can eat it however you want to eat it. It's like a beet, but it's not as, uh, uh, not, uh, not as hot or not as spicy. Uh, that, but that's kohlrabi. So there you go. I can go out there and pick a... Uh, uh, it's nice to be able. All this stuff was done from seed here at the house. Not a not a single one of these was was done from um, uh, by bringing in a plant uh, from from off, from off the property. In the fall, when the vegetable garden goes dormant, I'm not getting uh, seed from it because the way the season ends, the days are getting shorter. These will get killed by cold rather than by heat. But I'll redo the cool season vegetables in February with seed that I still have. And at the end of that season, as it gets hotter, all of these things like broccoli and, and lettuce, and they'll all bolt. And when they bolt, they'll flower and they'll produce seed and I can collect the seed at that time. So, but at my fall garden, I don't get to collect the seed on it. Uh, it just doesn't have time to form a seed before the cold actually kills it. But I can, get, I can catch up with that on the other side. So there you go, there's the vegetable garden. No real maintenance to do over there at some point the cold will come along and kill it. I'll pull the things out uh, of the ground, throw them on the compost pile, and then I'll cover the garden in some wood chips uh, for the winter time. So you can see things like the Joe Pie weed there have been left up, and uh, again, a lot of the uh, a lot of the native uh, perennials uh, have been left up in the garden. I think it looks a lot better out here after just you know a couple hours out here today. Uh, there's the pile from the uh, dahlias that got cut down. The um, uh, Lots of daffodils got planted into this space, and so the dahlias have gone to sleep. We're actually going to move these dahlias when they come back up in the spring, so there's a, there's a plan here uh, that you guys will uh, see to get these dahlias moved to the other side of the uh, vegetable garden back there. Uh, and what, lastly, we planted these. We've got these gigantic star daffodils from... Uh, color blends and they went in on the outside of the fence along the ground here. We've planted annuals, uh, large growing annuals back there for the last couple years. What we're going to do next year is the dahlias are coming to the inside of the fence and uh, we'll have some other annual that we'll do from seed going on the outside. This is going to be a giant show of big, uh, very large uh, daffodils coming up on the other side of the fence. And then one other small project we did today, we actually bagged up some of the uh, bulbs that we have. We're just gonna place Santa Claus in the neighborhood and go hand a few of these uh, daffodils out because we still have quite a few after we have uh, planted tons here and uh, planted some in some neighbor's gardens as well. I've got some of the uh, containers that I got uh, for in pretty inexpensive for these amaryllis last year. I actually need three more because I have six uh, containers. These are big giant amaryllis bulbs that I got from uh, color blends. Uh, this is Flamenco Queen uh, is this variety. They do a good job of tagging them. Uh, one thing with uh, Amaryllis is I'm doing this, I'm, I guess I'm shooting this video on December 4th. Uh, if I'd have done this weeks earlier, uh, these would have already been up and they'd be blooming by Christmas. So uh, you might want to think about doing them in mid-November if you want them blooming at Christmas. I'm actually growing these as gifts and so I actually want them, the foliage up uh, toward Christmas without the flowers being open. So I'm giving them something that's ready to go that can go in a you know, bright spot in their house and, and then flower. So that's the purpose of these amaryllis for me. Sometimes these will come wax covered, which is completely fine. The wax is on them just to hold the moisture in the bulb. But once you pull this bulb out of the ground, wherever it was farmed, it immediately started dying. It's been dying in this bag ever since. Slowly, uh, you know, it's drying out. Uh, but th these are, amaryllis are incredibly easy. The bulb's so big, it takes up almost the whole pot that I'm putting it in. These uh -huh. like to be root restricted, okay? So that's kind of important. You want a container that's just like an inch wider uh, all the way around, uh, or ultimately two inches wider than the, than the width of the bulb. Uh, and that way, it, 
they perform better root restricted you know meaning that thing's going to use up that space really quickly with its roots we can put the amaryllis in the ground in our area after they in the spring and they'll actually become perennials here in zone 7b in raleigh uh, and uh, they don't always reliably bloom but i do have some uh, some beautiful amaryllis in the ground that have you know overwintered over there already i just have a pine bark and compost blend that i literally use on everything uh, in this landscape that I'm going to use for this, but you can use any kind of potting soil you want to use for these amaryllis. They don't need any kind of fertilizer so soil, so you don't need you don't need any potting soil that's got fertilizer in it. The bulbs have everything they need. Every bulb video I've ever shot, I've said this. This bulb has everything it's ever going to need. Uh, it's already in a in a in a handy package. Uh, when it's after it's finished blooming, if you want to fertilize the container at that time, that would be the time that the bulb is producing just green leaves and using that energy to rebuild the energy back into the bulb. So, but they don't need it at all to bloom. Ultimately, with one of these, I want to leave about half of the bulb or slightly less than half of the bulb sticking out of the soil. Okay, And, and I want kind of the top of the bulb just above the neck of the, uh, of the container right there. But again, these just have everything, they got everything they need. Super easy. It's a great gift because somebody's gonna get the entire month of January. Um, they will have already read the book you were gonna give them and, you know, or not read it or whatever you were gonna give them, but these things will still be blooming, so they'll still be thinking of you later, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, that's it. At the end of the day, this is how this, this is how this should look, okay? It's just barely sticking out of the top. Uh, about almost half the bulb is uncovered in any kind of potting soil you want to use. I've got a little bottom tray for that, so I'll water it to settle the soil around it. And then it really doesn't need any water until that soil is pretty dry. Uh, you'll start to see them, the bud break on them in about a week or so. You'll start to see some green growth coming out of the top. It'll take another five or six weeks from there to get them up tall enough and get them blooming. So again, I'm trying to give it as a gift of anticipation rather than a gift of, a, of, of its peak blooming when I give it to them and it's not gonna last very long. Uh, so these tags I can take off and slide into the edge of the container. So if you know, wanna, wanna know the name of it later, but I like to keep those, I like to keep it with them uh, just so I remember which one it is, but again, I'm just going to repeat that on these uh, last two, and that's that's it. That's the whole process of growing amaryllis. It needs to go in a bright spot. I've got a spot right inside the back door where the dryer is, and the sun, south sun comes through that window, and I can set them on top of the dryer uh, in that sunny window, and that really helps them stay full and lush and compact. If you put them in too dark a space, you'll see that the leaves will sit flat and grow outward some and the, and the plant will just overall be stretched. You just see a different growth habit. You see that on a lot of sun loving things like that. You'll see that on like something even like agave. If you put it in too much shade, you'll see the foliage kind of grow flat to the ground. The amaryllis will do the exact same thing. So that's it. I'm going to plant these three and then I got to go get three more containers for those. But there's some of the things going on in the garden here in December. And really that maintenance is really not that big of a deal. The cool season vegetable garden is super rewarding. Even I'd almost rather do my cool season vegetable garden than my summer vegetable garden. My summer vegetable garden, that's when all the pests are active. <laughs> and so, you know, you feel like you're fighting a war sometimes when you're growing tomatoes and peppers and squash and zucchini and cucumbers and, you know, all those kinds of things. This time of year, you know, carrots are just doing their thing and <laughs> broccoli's doing its thing and, and they really don't you know, there's just less pest problems, so I don't. I can ignore that space. I have a fence around it to keep the rabbits out of it, and that's it. So, thanks. Thank you guys for following along with the channel. Uh, talk. See you soon.